Hello and welcome to Sophistix Beginners Tutorial. In this video I will show you how to create your structure graphically and how to apply loads to it. One way to graphically input your structure in Sophistic is Sophiplus. Sophiplus is a Sophistic tool based on AutoCAD. You can enter Sophiplus directly from your task tree. Now AutoCAD starts up and Sophiplus is available as a sidebar extension. We recommend to draw the geometry with simple AutoCAD lines. This way all the AutoCAD functionality can be used. Afterwards, structural elements can be assigned to these simple lines. The geometry of our 2D slab is created very quickly. I use the rectangle command and start drawing at the origin point. It has a length of 20 and a width of 10 meters. Now we want to cut the rectangle in half vertically. This is an easy task if you activate midpoint on edge in your object snap settings. I create a new line. Now a little triangle indicates the middle point of the edges of my rectangle. We also want to cut the left square in half horizontally. Now our reference geometry is ready and we can take a closer look at the Sophie Plus sidebar. The logic in the Sophie Plus sidebar is the same as in the task tree in SSD. We always want to work from top to bottom. So in this case we start with system. Here materials and cross sections are interesting for us. But we can of course always jump back to that later on. This is what we will do here. We will jump right into the structural elements, the second tab. First we will start defining our structural areas. We want the slabs to have a thickness of 240 millimeters. With a right click into the workspace, the program prompts you with a couple of advanced options to create structural areas. I choose point in area. The program can now automatically determine the area's boundaries. Click into the area on the top left. Now a dialog box for load definition appears. In a 2D slab system, each structure is automatically associated with two load cases. Load case one for permanent load and other load cases for imposed load. The load case number for the imposed loads will be incremented automatically. We want to consider a permanent load of 1 kN per square meter and an imposed load of 3 kN per square meter. Check the Show Dialog Once Only box to apply these settings to all other structural areas you create. These loads can be changed later if necessary. As mentioned, the program automatically identifies the boundaries of the area and creates the structural area number 1 with load case 1 and 2. The command point in area is still active, meaning you can simply click into the next rectangle to create area 2 and so on. I press escape to stop the command. And with that we finished creating our structural areas. It is a good idea to export your system to SSD from time to time to check for plausibility. To do so, simply click the export icon on the top of your sidebar. A dialog pops up that allows you to adjust the meshing properties for the finite elements. The preset is OK and you can confirm the dialog with OK. If the program encounters any problems during the meshing process, it will display error messages and warnings in the messages tab in the sidebar. Once the export is completed, we can switch to SSD and check the structure visually. You can see the finite element mesh as well as the quad elements that are created based on the structure we created in Sophiplus. Let's come back to AutoCAD. It is time to take a closer look at the loads in your system. Select loads in the sidebar. Now click the load case manager. It shows you all the actions that are defined in your system. As you can see, two actions were already created. In the load case tab, you can also see that you have four load cases in your system. Sophisti can automatically calculate the self weight of your structure. To do so, we set the factor of dead weight of load case 1 to 1.0. The permanent load you assign to the structure should only contain additional loads, for example, floor construction. To check or change the loads we defined while creating the structural areas, we can use the command modify structure area. Just a short side note about the functionality of Sophiplus. The left buttons are always to create something and the right smaller buttons are used to adjust those things you created. 
So I select the modify command and select the area. I press enter and I land directly in the adjustment options of this area. Via loads, edit structural area default load, we could now adjust the values we applied to this area. Our structural areas are now done, so we can focus on supports and the downstand beam. We use structural lines to create line supports. To do so, select the line command in the structural elements tab. In support conditions, select a support in global set direction. P set set. There are multiple options to define your line. Point to point, or you can use advanced options by right clicking the drawing area. I select pick lines or curves. This way I can select all the lines where I want to have supports. If there are multiple lines available, then the program will ask you which one you want to select. For example, here I want to select my line instead of the boundary of my structural area. I select my last outline and I'm done. Then I leave the command by pressing escape. Next up is our T-beam. We want to create it between area 1 and 2. We created the T-beam cross section in the last video. To create the T-beam, we select the line command in structural areas. This time we go to the beam slash cable tab and assign the T-beam as a centric beam to the structural line. Now we can use the right click options pick line or curve to place the downstand beam in our system. The program will again ask me which line I want to select and I select the AutoCAD line I created. I leave the command by pressing escape. I can also take a look at the preview of the system by moving it in 3D in AutoCAD. Last but not least, we want to add three columns. We are working in a 2D slab system. This means that columns are not line elements, but they are represented as a point element. I select the command point in structural areas. In lower upper column, you can tell the program to consider the structural point as a vertical elastic spring. The diameter of our circular column is 300 millimeters, so 0.3 meters. Material one, concrete is correct and the length of the column is 3 meters. Move your mouse in the drawing area and enter the coordinates of the columns with standard AutoCAD functionality. I displayed the point coordinates in this little side window right here. At this point I got to interrupt the training shortly because I made a mistake. I forgot to add a line support in the middle right here. You can of course add this line support at any point of your project to receive proper deflections for your slab. Ok, back to the training. Now our structure is done and we can export all our elements and loads that we created to SSD using the export button on the left top of your sidebar. Be careful though, as the export does not save your drawing. The drawing has to be saved separately via AutoCAD. On the other hand, saving your project will not export it to SSD. Once in SSD we can also adjust the representation of our structure, but we can double check what we created as you can see here, for example, our T-beam, our supports and our columns represented as springs. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video.